Oh, it's a follow-up project. It's a, you know, Mark and I have done this for a while now, so we were fearless going out this time a little bit more. So we wanted to make a bigger, better film with the new uh, technologies that's available in film stocks, and, and we upgraded our gear. So I wouldn't call it a sequel. It's a different film. Well, it's a, it's a uh, film that, uh, samsara is a word, Sanskrit word that means birth, death, and rebirth, or impermanence, themes of impermanence, and that's really where we looked for uh, location imagery and did our research. And um, so we're, we're trying to, as with Baraka, we're, we're trying to convey a sense of connection for the viewer, a connection to, to life uh, at this time around the world. Oh, that's a hard question to answer. Just that, you know, you notice that the world's a big, beautiful place. There's amazing things and that we're all, you know, we've all been invited to this planet. You know, in life, you could say invited is here and didn't ask anybody to approve of the guest list. But we're all interconnected as well. And that's what samsara is about, that flow that we all experience. Uh, there's so many places we've been to uh, <laughs> that we, uh, you know, you're inspired by, and that's really part of the reason you go out and make these films is to, is to try to bring that back, that 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 feeling of that inner uh, essence that's that's moving in a human way, and and bring back an imagery that will allow uh, the the viewer to feel that. And so it, it happens all over. It's just everywhere you go, you you hopefully find that. Well, the music's half of the film. It's a 50-50 kind of synthesis. And the music is really expressing feeling and emotion. Since there's no main characters or, or dialogue, that's where the, you could say the dialogue is, is in the music. And we're trying to, to, to choose music that has a spacious quality that doesn't really uh, present a strong point of view that allows the viewer to bring uh, some of their own experience to, to, the, to viewing it and listening to it. Now, 3D is really interesting, especially in, in the natural world, I think. It really enhances, I think, the, the location and the feeling of, of uh, the atmosphere of the place that you're shooting. Um, and um, I don't know, 65 millimeter is pretty hard to beat. You know, when Mark and I started this project four or five years ago, we looked at digital, but it just wasn't ready for the road at that time. Who knows, maybe in another year, there'll be 8K or 10K sensors that can match what 65 millimeter, the fidelity of 65 millimeter. And our project is not about a main character or, or a dialogue, it's location. So we wanted to bring the essence of these places out and the portraiture. And 65 is really the only way to capture it. Oh, I work with other directors on their projects and I love to shoot commercials and work on commercials. And you learn a lot. That's where you get to play with all the toys. Ah, well, that's a hard question to answer. You know, just if people would just realize we're all here on the same mud ball that's floating in space, you know, that we shouldn't be beating each other up, uh, but working with each other with great ideas and, and exchanging, uh, you know, cultures with one another. You know, the, the Internet's a great tool. It uh, really is opening the world. And connecting it together, yeah. Well, Mark can talk about this. It's about the, you know, we saw a lot of um, suffering and a lot of uh, 
cultures that uh, uh, places that were um, not as well off as others and so it, it begins to make you think a little bit different about where you're from and what you really should be doing. You know, we're making a film and it's just about doing the best we can do to provide a, an, an experience that allows people to connect to the phenomenon of, of life around the world. And that's, I think, what we, what we can bring. Uh, you know, there's no one answer to all the travails and problems in the world. You know, you're just doing what you know how to do um, and offering it and that's what we've, we've done with this, this film. I don't know about how you would generalize. You know, we're 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 really in a in a deep uh, um, specific approach with what we're doing with our films. You know, not 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 so much games. It really tri fr trying to provide a an inner journey, an inner journey experience that's not non non-judgmental, that's uh, personal, that's open to some interpretation by the viewer, that hopefully is uh, is moving and profound. And that's really what we're we're trying to do with the film. God, there's so many great documentaries and features. Uh, just on, you know, it goes way back. You know, I used to watch all these uh, European films by Bergman and Fellini and David Lean. Uh, uh, just, you know, the, the 2001. You know, everybody says that, but it had that 20 minute <laughs> nonverbal sequence in it, and I think that's what set me off on this crazy path. Do you have any? I, I, I go back to the David Lean films and the 70 millimeter big epic widescreen films that, you know, and uh, it's, a, if it's, a privilege, it's a privilege to shoot with 70 millimeter now, even now, you know, whatever, 40 years later. I remember the feeling when I watched those films being just a little kid. It felt like you were in a temple in these theaters and that this 70 millimeter big screen was just showing you the world, you know, the truth. I don't, I don't know how to quite put it, but there is a... It's the truth, but better. Yeah, there is an essence in this yeah. uh, uh, 70 millimeter quality that uh, does come through. But, and that's, You know, the, the technology is just moving at such a, uh, a rapid pace in so many different directions, and it's really not something that anyone has ever has any kind of control over. It's really on its own, uh, moving in, in all directions, and we're all impacted by it. And it's not all good, and it's not all bad. It's a, it's a mixture, you know, complicated question. I just hope we can all communicate with each other and uh, realize we've all been invited here. Well, I think we're all, I could answer that by just saying I think we're all spiritual beings whether we know it or not and always have been, always will be. And that's, we are nature. Well, uh, you know, we're, we, ha we have developed and I think improved our the filmmaking approach over the course of the films and it's just, I think we, it's just an evolution and uh, trying to express what we've been discussing earlier, trying to express that uh, in, a, in a better, more complete way, you know, as, as technology has developed, as, our, as filmmaking has developed, as the world's changed. And, um, and that's just what, what um, we're, t we're talking about films here, and that's uh, um, what we're, we're, we're offering as a film. I think it was through some girlfriends way, way back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Filmex in, in Los 90s, Angeles. Yeah. Karina Scotzi was just out and Mark saw it and we got together through our girlfriends and realized we were on the same kind of artistic path. Mark's an inventor and runs a big company and he's also an artist and so we just hit it off well. Yeah, I was just knocked out by what he did on that film and he was uh, had a box of 
metal parts to build a camera that turned out to be an IMAX camera that we ended up making Kronos with. And that was how it started back in the early 80s. So it's been 30 years, 28 years, I don't know, a long time.